So looking at one more example here with uh, a double derivative, a second order derivative of uh, an expression with two exponential uh, terms. So don't let that freak you out. It's just ex uh, uh, trigonometric ex uh, expressions, not uh, exponential expressions, excuse me. So we just follow the rules. Uh, sine of x, derivative of that is cosine of x, so cosine of x dx dx, which is 1, equals negative sine of y dy dx plus derivative of 1, which is 0. So we get dy dx equals to negative cosine of x over sine of y. Well, <clears throat> All we have to do is um, use the quotient rule or recognize that this is probably reduces down uh, to some tangent term. But be very careful that there's an x term here and a y term here. So we can't uh, combine these into a, a tangent or a cotangent. So we have to apply the quotient rule. Let's go ahead and do that. d2y dx squared equals... Well, derivative of the top term is negative sine. So negative, negative is a positive. So positive sine of x times the bottom term minus derivative of the bottom term, which is cosine of y dy dx times the top term, which is negative cosine of x, all over the bottom term squared. So we have this dy dx term right here that's going to be replaced by this dy dx term. So we rewrite this. d squared y over dx squared equals sine of x times sine of y minus, well, there's a negative term here, so we know that uh, <clears throat> we're going to be adding. But then we replace this dy dx, and there's another negative term. So three negatives equals one negative. So we'll rewrite this. Cosine of x, cosine of y times cosine of x, sine of y. And all this is divided by sine squared of y. And uh, we can rewrite this a little bit. Simplifying it, sine of x times sine of y minus cosine squared x times cosine of y all over sine cubed y. So we did another example earlier where there was uh, a second order derivative and there was a, also a cube term in the answer. Uh, so when we're taking implicit differentiation and using the quotient, the quotient rule, um, there most likely will be a cube term. So if you do see a cube term, then you know you're uh, heading in the right direction. If not, maybe you need to reevaluate your answer. Uh, and that is a pretty complicated uh, application of implicit differentiation. But once again, we kept it simple by uh, thinking about this problem in different little chunks and different little processes that make up the giant process. All right. Thanks for watching educator.com. We will see you in the next.